defending the republic from enemies foreign and domestic it's alex jones i tell you i have giant piles of riveting key amazing news but i gotta kick this broadcast off with our big story yesterday atlantic monthly the elite east coast leftist establishment blue blood robber baron publication that puts out the talking points more than even the New York Times. I mean, it, this is read by the elite for the elite, saying they're organizing and looking and preparing at continuity of government overthrow of President Trump. Now, I've looked at all the angles of that. That would be done violently. They're not going to let Trump again be uh, in, uh, there to speak for himself or stand up to the liars. So I'm going to take the interview uh, and the breakdowns out of your stay and repost those on the front page of InfoWars.com in the next 30 minutes so listeners that thought that was important can get my special report where I break all that down to everybody you know. Because we're not just about passively telling the audience about what's happening, what's unfolding. You're giving us info. We're giving you info. We're working together. We're restoring the republic one mind at a time, and it's happening. Wow. Remember of the different New York Times articles I've shown, one that we've shown probably the most, uh, probably second, because there's that one with the headline on January 20th with Roger Stone and Paul Manafort and the rest of it saying they were wiretapped at Trump Tower. They were talking to the Russians. And then, of course, they weren't. And the Trump said, that's illegal to leak that, even though it's not true. They went, oh, we never said that. Well, there was this headline, Obama administration rushed to preserve intelligence of Russian election hacking, had the intelligence, and then gave it to the press. That's the New York Times, Matthew Rosenberg, who goes on MSNBC and CNN and says, I'm crazy, I made this up. Well, guess what? Top Obama administration official, the head of the entire Russian program at the State Department, Evelyn Farkas, P Paul is such a journalist, he said, did Obama's defense deputy just admit spying on Trump? Do, do bears go potty in the woods? Does that woman look like a bug-eyed warmonger? Absolutely. They're on the morning, morning, morning jihad against Russia program with Mika Brzezinski, whose father's life is sworn to destroy Russia in his own books. He admits it. See, nobody knows the background of who you're looking at here. These are total Russia phobes that want to conquer Russia, mount Russia's head on the wall. But they hate us even more. Why the globalists came here to take over so they can dominate the world using our strength. They want Russia for that as well. Look what the Bolsheviks did out of New York and London, 1917, once they got control of Russia, turned it into a giant engine of evil. And they want what was theirs back again. You slaves will never escape the Trotskyites. <laughs> like Chomsky, I'm going to get to him in a minute. But here it is. Oh, she says, oh, he rushed to save the intelligence that we had on them, the proof they're Russian agents, and distributed it. This is on MSNBC saying exactly what was in the New York Times. It's just simply incredible. This was back when on the 19th of, of January. The next day they come out and say wiretaps. They say they have transcripts. And I don't want to beat this horse to death, but you know what happened. I know what happened. You know Obamacare isn't free, even though they told you it would be. You know it doubled and tripled premiums. It was a giant screw job. But still, the sheeple don't know that. You've got to reach out to them. They're being told that Trump did Obamacare, that it's his fault, that he wrote it and passed it. Literally, they're on the news saying it's his fault. Now he owns Obamacare. You've got to remind folks you're not a goldfish. Obamacare is Obama. That's why it's called Obamacare. And I know you think I'm being sarcastic. I'm not. When they say vaccines have never hurt anyone, they're totally safe. Remember the Sesame Street show I said, kids, get all your shots. No one's ever been hurt. It's totally safe. Every insert says it can kill you. I have news today of Gardasil paralyzing more people in mainstream news. But again, the Muppets for little kids say it's totally safe. But what I'm getting at here is what's what's old news to you is, is, is new to other folks. When you have the former head of the State Department's operation against Russia saying, yes, we were spying on Trump. On video, it's bombshell, it's on Infowars.com. So much more coming up, stay with us. It's an amazing time to be alive. Obama administration officials have gone from arrogantly admitting they were spying on Trump to denying it and saying it's totally insane and calling for the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Nunes, to resign because he dare go talk to the president and confer 
and show him more documentation of exactly who was illegally spying on him and then leaking it. Because they can spy on foreign leaders while the president-elect's talking to them, but you can't be then sharing that information domestically or giving it to the press. Well, now we have video. Last night on MSNBC, Obama's defense deputy just admitted spying on Trump. The former Assistant Secretary of Defense, Evelyn Farkas, also signed the State Department, has caused controversy after she appeared to admit during an interview on MSNBC that Obama administration spied on Donald Trump's transition team in order to gain intelligence for political use. Excuse me. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a radio listener, I'll give you the headline, but here it is from March 1st. It was also reported in January in the New York Times. The exact same headline, Obama administration rushed to preserve intelligence of Russian election hacking, including spying on the president, the incoming president. They admitted all that. Ugh. But the reason I go back to this, I'm going to play that clip coming up, is it illustrates just, again, the fact that they think you have no memory. They think that you are a complete and total, absolute moron. Let me just do this. It's kind of a game I've been playing for decades, and I've never actually done it successfully. But let me just try to maybe cover 50 headlines of what's coming up so you get an idea. Let's just start here. Then I'll go back to more detail. Chomsky, Trump may stage false flag terror attack to rally support. We're going to respond to that. I thought false flags didn't exist, Chomsky. You say I'm crazy. Fear of Trump planet. Anthony Frieda, article, Infowars.com. Very powerful, and it actually dovetails with Michael Moore says Trump will cause human extinction, even though he's promoting not having families, not having kids. Roger Stone's new Netflix doc with yours truly in it, premiering at Tribeca Film Fest. We're going to get into census. Immigration to bust 100-year record continues surging. Student has grade docked for using mankind in English paper. We're getting a whole bunch of Hollywood propaganda and garbage coming out. Oh, here's another one. This is out of the Daily Mail. HPV vaccine par paralyzes 12-year-old aspiring pop star. I just mentioned this yesterday. And look, it's, it's, it's in the news today. I mean, it's in the news every day. They admit it's paralyzed and killed. Killed thousands we know of in the United States alone. Japan and India banned it after one year. Mexico's made it compulsory. Just, it's such a huge issue. You want to know who the boogeyman is? It's not it, the clown coming to get you kids out from underneath the bed at night or out of the sewer pipe. It's the globalist right out in plain view. That's just some of the news there. Felony charges for two who secretly filmed Planned Parenthood saying they violated medical rights. But you see, if you're a whistleblower showing other crime, you're protected. But it doesn't matter. They've been charged with felonies in California. Bob Dylan received Nobel Prize in Stockholm. The Nobel Prize. I wouldn't accept the Nobel Prize if they gave it to Al Gore and Henry Kissinger. Oh, oh, I forgot. Obama, before he was even uh, in, when he was president-elect, <laughs> he's launched all these wars. Uh, oh, toddler burned by coffee at Eastside Starbucks, airlifted to the hospital. That's just some of the news here. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm not going in the order of importance. It's just it's, it's all important. Um, Sky News data, Brexit poll, half of Britain's happy about EU divorce proceeding. They're moving forward officially with the split from the EU who's threatened them with economic Armageddon. Oh, and that ties into this. Trump bump, consumer confidence hit 16-year high. Housing prices rise. Best small business numbers since 1984. But don't worry, they tried for eight days to drive down the stock market. They started failing yesterday and went back up. But they are trying and admitting they're trying because they're the good guys. They're the big mega banks who want you poor so they can control your life. They don't care that Goldman Sachs made record profits just since Trump got in off of a rising stock market because they want you to be poor. It's called greedy scumbaggery. It's called feudalism. In fact, it's the most popular system of government in history. The elite's keeping you poor to control you. 
And that ties into UN advisor claims Trump won't last four years in office. German prime minister says Ergon, a terrorism godfather. Yeah, you can take what's happened with the communist Chinese. In fact, I didn't get to this yesterday. I should have. I mentioned it. Well, you guys pull it out of the stack. And it was an InfoWars article linking to French news. Didn't get any coverage here. And a bunch of articles yesterday about Ergun again and his foreign minister saying to Europe, you will do whatever we say politically with us. You will give us all this aid. You will open your borders further to us or we will activate the it's over five million Turks conservatively just in what five different major European countries. That's an old number. Guys, look up the number of Turks living in, in, in Europe, please. Western Europe. The point is, he said, we will activate them and they will burn down every city. We will launch a holy war, or that translates jihad. So, oh, have the Turk nationals in and then have them directed by their Islamist leader. Because they let the Turks in, in the last 50 years because they weren't the radical Muslims. In fact, they were the old Christians that got overrun by the Muslims when the Western Empire of the old Holy Roman Empire finally fell. That'd be the Eastern Empire, excuse me. Constantinople. Which is now, what's, what's Constantinople now? The capital of Turkey, Istanbul. And everybody goes and goes, look at the incredible architecture of the Muslims. Those are churches, like the Blue Mosque. Oh, but they're, they're friends now. Oh, let them all in. And then, boom, we will burn your cities. Turkish dictator Ergun threatened Europe on the same day a London attack by terrorist scum. Think about that. Now, see, I say I never go through the whole stack without stopping, but it's, it's, it's hard to do. Here's a big one that I'll be covering. In battle, DNC asked all staffers for resignation letters. Major reorganization Democratic Party underway. NBC News. So, so... So when the Democrats fire everybody, because there's such a boatload of just trash and, and anti-American scum, but they're, they're failures. They're going to bring an even worse group. You better believe it. It's totally normal to fire everyone. But when Trump has 40, was it three or six of the U.S. attorneys fired, Bill Clinton fired 93, that was totally normal. But when 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 Trump starts kicking out Democrats. Oh, it's unheard of the outrage. Excuse me for breathing. Again, that's how stupid they think you are. Are you that dumb? Let's see. Here it is. Oh, in battle DNC ask all staffers for resignation. White House, Trump was right on the, this came out last week, but more news from the police on the J Jewish Center bomb threats. And it turns out it was a young Jewish man. Spencer went on to say those who accuse the right of being behind the attacks need to be called out. And it uh, turns out that a 19-year-old Jewish man named Michael Kadar, who had dual Israeli citizenship and was, of course, a big leftist, was behind it. Because you need to say that the Trump supporters are putting swastikas up and knocking over Jewish cemeteries because that's why he's... Married in to Orthodox Jewish family and has Jewish grandkids because he's, he's so anti-Semitic. But it never ends, does it? It just never ends. The false flags never end. And that's what the left is so famous for. And that brings me now, before we go to break, to Noam Chomsky. Trump may stage false flag terror attack to rally support. Now, controlled corporate media always makes a joke about me and says that I say every terror attack's a false flag. Well, I introduced false flag in the last 18 years or so. I didn't really cover it a lot the first few years before 9-11 even happened because Oklahoma City, 19 years ago or 20 years ago now, man, was a false flag. We had the newscast, the police. I interviewed them all. They saw the feds by name planting bombs. The feds said they weren't there. I guess I got to skip the break. They were planning bombs. They said they weren't there. We got their hotel receipts. It all unfolded. We know by name who planted the bombs. People saw them doing it. They said, what are you doing? Oh, we're doing telephone work. She said, you don't look like telephone repairmen. And we had her on, Jane Graham, many times. 
We've had other witnesses on. Gray sticks of butter in the stairwell areas. And she would go up and down it for exercise at lunch. And they were in there on the days before, wiring it all in. And I've interviewed the police officers, head of the K-9 unit, many others that they didn't kill, like Terrence Yankee. It was cop of the year and the first to respond. And so, yes, there are pure staged events, false flags, where you use a sheep-dipped guy like Tim McVeigh put into special CIA operations in the Army, who was then pissed off they were actually going to bomb a nursery and said, I'm not part of this, so you saw what they did to him. They were going to burn Elohim City that was being run by the Southern Poverty Law Center. These are nasty people, folks. But then Chomsky, the pseudo-intellectual funded by the big foundations, comes out and tells you that Trump's going to stage a terror attack with no proof, no nothing. And so I have a comment on Steve Watson's article that's up on Infowars.com that deals with all of this. It's at the bottom. The real false flag is opening Europe up to Islamic invaders, 5 million plus, and then using that crisis to revoke the liberties and freedoms of the people in those nations who are fighting for their very survival. The real false flag is allowing thousands of unvetted Islamists as refugees in the United States with the same aim, to merge the left with Islamo-fascism and use the incompatibility of Orthodox Islam to force us to have political correctness, Sharia light laws, to not stir up the Muslims, which they now are openly saying and doing. Isn't that just darling? Chomsky, Trump may stage false flag terror attack to rally support. Incident could be blamed on vulnerable people. The 5 million jihadis that are in Europe, 80% military age men, brought in by Merkel, opened up. 3 million more in North Africa ready to come in. The EU ordering countries, they'll be fined hundreds of thousands of euros per refugee they don't let in. Since when does the UN and the EU run those countries? Since they announced they'll march an EU army in and take over any military doesn't submit. The arrogance, but people are rolling over. The cuckold Germans, the cuckold French, the cucksters, people that are in to being cucked. And what is cucking, folks? It's getting in to being dominated and controlled, getting into being subservient. It's Stockholm Syndrome. It's watching 10 guys line up right in front of you and, 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 and gangbang your wife and tell you you're a little piece of nothing right in front of you. A lot of men get into it. And that's what's going on here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a cuckold West that bows down to these nobodies, these pseudo-intellectuals like Chomsky, who only tells you about one spectrum of the control system, and then he sits there when Trump has the whole power structure against him and is actually trying to deliver real prosperity to the average people and fabulous wealth to the elites as well. Bringing back old-fashioned Americana, he sits there, worshipped by the foppish Pseudo-intellectuals. Leftist professor Noam Chomsky has charged that it's possible President Trump will stage a terror attack in order to offset initial policy problems and quell opposition. Speaking with the left website alternate, Chomsky, which is, oh, Chomsky, oh, who floats on his magic, suggested that Trump could organize a false flag incident to rally supporters who are discovering that his promises are built on sand. Oh, yes, 300 billion in new jobs, hundreds of major factories and companies coming back, consumer confidence the best in 16 years, the best small business numbers since 1984, the last big recovery we really had, on and on and on and on. It would take too long to, re to recite it all, wouldn't it? Renouncing we're a secure you know, border, nation, sovereign, breaking the back of political correctness, actually going after the jihadi armies, Obama, and the globalists turned loose. Cleaning up what the globalists started, just wars of defense, trying to vet the Islamic hordes you're bringing in that had already come in and invaded Syria as the invasion point, as they did two times in the last century into Turkey and then trying to get into Europe. And you're the traitors. You know what you've done. You hate the West so much that, 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 that there's been a bosom for you to grow like vipers. You want to conquer us so much like you want to conquer Russia with your filth. And your, your, your degenerate collectivist slavery that you know is slavery, that you know puts you in charge over the people. I'd call him a neo-Trotskyite.
He says Trump with no evidence as Trump sits there and takes him all over the news saying kill him and, and COG. Democrats going around the Pentagon trying to organize a violent overthrow. And he sits there and just takes it and takes it and takes it while he desperately tries to reverse all the tyranny and the shadow government and the deep state and floor seven openly in the WikiLeaks block him and try to cheat us and try to stop everything we're doing. And you just sit there going, oh, Noam Chomsky, oh, let me tell you how it is. Yes, he might do a false flag. When I came out and said our government at the highest levels worked with Saudi Arabia to take uh, place on 9-11 to then attack countries that were actually westernized and not Wahhabists like Iraq, who we set up, who was CIA run, followed his orders to invade Kuwait. That's fact. That's declassified. People go, oh, but he gassed the Kurds using CIA directives and, and weather reports. That's all been in the news. I get our military then allied with the Kurds, which is fine. I don't think they're bad people in the, in the region, comparatively speaking. They're not really as radical. But the point is, is that the facts are facts. But, oh, there's no Chomsky. He doesn't give you any facts like that. He just goes, oh, 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 my gosh. Oh. Here, let me act like I'm Noam Chomsky. Let me read this article like I'm Noam Chomsky. Um, yes. Mm. Chomsky, well, Trump may stage false flag. Terror attack to rally support. Incident could be blamed on vulnerable people. <sighs> Professor Noam Chomsky has charged that it's possible President Trump will stage a terror attack in order to offset initial policy problems and quell opposition. Let me act in like Oh, 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 wow, oh, oh my God. The big foundations that fund the universities fund him. Oh, he's so anti-establishment. I'm sorry. Uh. Speaking, speaking with left-leaning website Alternet, Chomsky suggested that Trump could organize a false flag incident to rally supporters who are discovering that his promises are built on sand. <coughs> They're all hands on deck trying to plunge the stock market, bankrupt everything so they can finally get you under their dirty thumbs. Finally dictate the terms of your surrender, better clingers. No matter what color you are, they want your guns and they want you on that on that gulag plantation learning to lick those boots. In order to in order to maintain his popularity. Oh, but uh, let's put some more fake polls out there. You know, hell, they had Hillary at like 78 in some polls and CNN on Election Day. You know, well, why not? Why not say Trump? Trump has a, ne a negative 200. Like, like, let's say the Democrats have approval rating of 100 and Trump has a negative of 200. No one in America likes Trump. Not one person. CNN. That's your fake news. I mean, why don't you just go that far? But see, he's actually being honest with everybody. Just like to their own troops. Moore was like, eh, Trump's going to win. Watch, because they knew the real polls, just like I did. They knew the big data mining information Google and others had. That Bloomberg has, that the high-level business folks, that billionaires like Trump get access to. Google only gives, and, and, and Bloomberg only gives super executive class access to stuff they've got that's better than the NSA, that the NSA is jacked into, to select global corporations. That's why everybody wants to kiss globalists, but is to get entree into that data swamp. They see we're blind. We sleep, they live. But don't you know there were people inside Bloomberg and other areas that were leaking intel to Trump? He knows other billionaires that aren't playing along with the New World Order, at least on their real actions, like Peter Thiel and others. So they all know this. So look, oh, a little Freudian slip here. In order to maintain his popularity, the Trump administration will have to try to find some means of rallying with support and changing the discourse from the policies they're carrying out, which are basically a wrecking ball to something else. Oh, a wrecking ball to the horrible globalist scumbag system we're in. The professor also hinted at such a staged terror attack could be blamed on vulnerable people, the poor little sweet Muslims that kill each other everywhere they live and won't let anybody else live in their countries, like 99% Muslim. But that's okay because they're vulnerable people and he represents compassion and love and good. Just like the Pope who won't let anybody into the Vatican that calls for Italy to bring on millions more, quote, refugees running around raping, killing and going on welfare. Maybe scapegoat saying, well, I'm sorry I can't bring your jobs back, which he's actually doing. Because these people are preventing it 
and the typical scapegoats goes to vulnerable people, immigrants, terrorists. Scapegoats are terrorists. Oh, okay. Wow, I love the Wow, the terrorists are scapegoats. Those poor little terrorists. He actually said that. The headline here ought to be, Chomsky calls terrorists scapegoats and bills them as poor little victims. Muslims and elites. <laughs> this is the best unintentional comedy when you're awake. But see, they're like reading to a man in a trance. And then the sweet little terrorist, Trump wants to hurt you. He doesn't want you. Oh, I, a little, little vampire perched by your bed. Oh, I'm Noam Chomsky. Oh, oh. And one rolls out this liberal carpet and everyone just falls down. Oh, he's here. Oh, my God. A five-year-old can write his books. Oh, he's so intellectual. Oh, oh. Maybe scapegoat saying, Oh, maybe. Oh, I like to. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe pull a rabbit out of his rear end. Well, I'm sorry. I can't bring back your jobs because these bad people are preventing it. And the typical scapegoats, vulnerable people, immigrants, terrorists, Muslims, and elites. Oh, the elites. Oh, the poor. The those are the poor the people. Noam Chomsky's defending the elites. The it's everyone. The elites, the Muslims, everyone against the poor, mean Americans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let me finish up on Noam Chomsky. This has come out, Carol Quigley wrote an 1,100-page book for the State Department and the CIA. A thousand copies were published. They, but because it was government-funded, they couldn't block the republishing of it by groups affiliated with the John Birch Society in the 80s and 90s. We sell the book, by the way, in hardcover at InfoWarsStore.com. That's a separate issue. And it was the head of the Georgetown Political Science and Bill and Hillary Clinton's mentor in the CIA. But they explain how they would create and control these leftist professors who would then lead the opposition to globalism. And then at a critical time, they would support globalism. Now, Noam Chomsky is the main guy. He's like the fake counterpart to the Brzezina Brzezinski that's pushing the you know, worldwide tyranny. And then somebody like Chomsky, you know, you read his books, and I didn't learn anything from him. He already knew it all from reading actual globalist books. were just straight-up manuals on how they were doing it. But he would do it from kind of a leftist communist perspective. But as the left hero, you know, battling the evil corporations. But then notice 1999 came, and they staged false flags there to blame the demonstrators, who were mainly liberals at the WTO in Seattle, very legitimate group of people. And from that point on, all the professors flipped. They got their orders, and they flipped and became pro-globalist, pro-corporate world government. And to read him now saying Trump's going to stage terror attacks to blame it on the Muslims and, quote, the elites and other vulnerable groups. So now Ch Chomsky's defending the precious elites and the Davos man and, and, and globalism. It has to be propped up. I mean, that's what Brzezinski said last week in a speech. That's what John McCain said last week, last Friday in a speech. They're hitting the panic button in every elite publication. Financial Times of London, Atlantic Monthly, Foreign Affairs, Public Affairs, or the Washington Post. And when you read these papers, I, I read them every day. It's, yeah, we're getting ready to overthrow Trump and uh, use COG to do it. We're going to suspend Congress for six months and we'll reorganize the country. And we know best and we're getting the military ready. Just, you know, Atlantic Monthly, no big deal. Noam Chomsky thinks it's all wonderful. Oh, because Trump's the elite. And he's not delivering on his promises, so he needs to blow something up now. I mean, he's delivering on his promises. I can't believe he's getting anything done the way he's under attack. And the open mutiny going on. And then this guy can't admit that populism, classic Americana, free market, knocks the socks off. That produced Marilyn Monroe, the 57 Chevy, Saturn Rockets, rock and roll, everything. The whole world's culture. Then globalists hijacked it and turned it into evil. But it was wild, wild west sexy. And it came in hundreds of flavors. And you could start out poor and become the richest man in America. You could be the president. You could be from some small guy in Fredericksburg, Texas, and end up being the head of the U.S. Navy. But under their system now, that's not how it works. You've got to be part of the elite. This guy is such a fraud. He is such a fraud. And any real leftist out there 
Because I remember when the left actually stood for some good things, but it was always controlled by the big foundations to keep the globalist enemy, which would just be kind of Americana, classical, Thomas Jefferson liberalism, on a very short lease. And that's just gone now. All the real liberals I know say, what happened to liberals when they start beating people up? And you know, it's when they got scared of what Trump's going to do. Because you believe TV shows that he's Hitler? And because at hundreds of universities, people paint swastikas on the wall and knock over Jewish tombstones and in every case get caught and confess? It's so obvious. There reportedly have not been real cross burnings in this country that have been documented in over a decade. When my dad was a kid and his dad stood up against the KKK and stuff like that in East Texas and ran as a Republican and did things like that, my dad said, you overplay it like there were a bunch of threats and a big deal. They were hated and seen as toothless losers in the early 1960s, son. I mean, sure, every once in a while, I, I, you know, somebody would say something rude to my family or we'd be in a grocery store or something and somebody would walk over and say something mean to my grandmother, but it, it was always trashy people. But, I mean, it's just, uh, believe me, I know. I mean, the Klan, the Klan was, a, was a, 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 a joke, horrible thing to be associated with by the 1950s when Eisenhower and other people said, this is degenerate. And it had already become a gang, you know, since the Civil War. It was a paramilitary force at first during the occupation of the South. But the, that's all just history, folks. And they just don't think you know any of it. And they have these charlatans like Noam Chomsky, who sits there like a garden gnome, like Yoda. And goes, and then he comes out and talks about elites, the poor elites. No one that knows history can argue with the fact that the left was anti-globalist. And so was the libertarian movement and the conservative arm of the public. Who wouldn't be against foreign TPP and IMF and World Bank and WTO foreign secret groups running us? I don't care what color you are, where you came from. Uh, left, right, center, no one should be for that. That's why I was against it and made a film about it, The Takeover. But you read Chomsky's writings now, it is disgusting. He is for the most elite corporations and their consolidation of control and the censorship you see happening and all the rest of it. And you talk to his followers, they are the dumbest pseudo-intellectuals you've ever talked to. They don't know any facts. They don't know anything. And I don't try to say that to put them down to feel good. I feel bad. That there's just generations of people with worthless college degrees who just feel like Noam Chomsky's their god, and he's not, folks. Noam Chomsky, like the Pope, like the communist president in China, who's a dictator, like Ergun, all these people are dirtbags. And they all hate Donald John Trump. Because Donald Trump wants prosperity for everybody. Now, I'm done on that because I've got a lot to cover here. But speaking of eugenics, we just played that Soylent Green intro. Michael Moore says Trump will cause human extinction. Liberal propagandist Michael Moore said Monday afternoon on Twitter that President Donald Trump will cause the extinction of human life on Earth. Now, if you actually get into what the leftists and the globalists are pushing, and you just heard statements from top leftists like Bill Maher, they want massive population reduction. They want less people. They don't realize massive populations built the cities, built the technologies, built the systems. But this cloistered, you know, heavily armed hypocrite with mansions all over the country, he supports the whole abortion factory system. He supports the whole globalist program that he tells you Trump will extinct all life on Earth. Historians in the near future will mark today, March 28, 2017, as the day the extinction of human life on Earth begins, thanks to Donald Trump. What? Meanwhile, HPV vaccine paralyzes 12-year-old aspiring pop star, Daily Mail. And they admit it does it, it kills people. It's all part of the eugenics operation, but it's okay because AP reports felony charges for two who secretly filmed Planned Parenthood in California. But if you're exposing crime and committing a crime to do it by the letter of the law, but only targeting the health care practitioners, you're covered.
You're given immunity under common law, but see, they're all up there happy. See, it's, uh, the crime isn't keeping babies alive. The crime isn't harvesting their organs. The crime isn't telling people that you're selling their baby's parts and making sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was like a, you know, an eight and a half month old baby. No, no, no. The crime is videotaping it. Now, those folks are heroes. Absolute heroes. And what's happening in the UK? Well, they had the Lisbon Treaty a few decades ago, and suddenly it was a treaty, but the UK never voted. People of England and Scotland and other areas, uh, Wales, never voted to enter the European Union. And now they make over 90% of their laws. That's admitted. That's not debatable. And the EU Parliament is elected. But it's ceremonial and advisory is the term to the council that has immunity and is above the law. Oh, and I forgot the best part, tax exempt. Why not? That's now threatening an EU army takeover. They weren't ready to roll that out two years ago when we first started exposing it with Lord Moncton. So they said, oh, conspiracy terrorists claim they've seen secret draft plans for an EU army to block countries. They now call them states from leaving. But guess what? A few months ago, they released the exact same draft and admit it's true. Just like we have a federal government, the Civil War wouldn't let us leave. They're now saying, but see, we voted to enter into this. We were at least part of it, had a Revolutionary War together and a shared group. The French, the Germans, the, you know, the, the, the Swedes, I mean, these people are, are, are as different as night and day culturally. That's why they have countries. They're, they're not, they didn't get along. But the globalists want to force flood Europe now with even more incompatible people, Islamicists and others. And then referee the whole melee in a giant false flag that Noam Chomsky and others have been cheerleading of flooding us with totally incompatible dregs of the Islamic world who invaded Syria wanting some free land and got their asses kicked into Europe where they're now taking over there running around like mobs of mobs of psychotic leprosy covered vermin cultural leprosy but the good news is they move forward, and it's popular in the U.K., and the Prime Minister has now announced they're going forward with the pullout. Nigel Farage celebrates Article 50 Day. You've been triggered. And they laughed at him for decades in Parliament and then in the EU Parliament. They're not laughing now. They also tried to kill him. The police said, no, they, they've tried to kill him repeatedly. Cut brake lines? You bet. Wheels off your vehicle? You bet. Crash your airplane? You bet. The pilot is pretty much a vegetable. Farage climbed out, blood pouring out all over. What, seven broken bones? <laughs> Live to fight another day. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, look, sick ISIS militant made female prisoners torture each other for not wearing the veil. But that's okay. They've got UN programs running all over European TV. We played it showing rock stars and movie stars, hot blondes saying, I wear the hijab, and saying, you wear the hijab, telling, telling G -G German women, we've told our men not to be men. Now learn to get cuckled. You don't want somebody who was sweet like your daddy. You, you know, no, no, no. You now get an Islamic man that, you know, you're going to learn, learn you good. Norway's Islamic Council hires fully veiled woman as communications officer. But that's okay. If you criticize Islam, you get arrested as the left's ally. Oh, here's another one. Leftist flick off memorial dedicated to victims of communism. Daily Caller. It's up on Infowars.com. Most of the responses mock the idea that there should be a memorial for the many innocent people who died as a result of communist policies. Leftist staged a tiny protest at the Victims of Communism Memorial in Washington, D.C. last weekend, where they all flicked off the monument designed to remember the millions murdered by the totalitarian ideology. Most of the responses on Twitter to those pictures mock the idea that there should be a memorial for the many innocent people who died as a result of communist policies. They've gone to universities, they've got worthless degrees. They literally believe living under some communist general like you do in China or North Korea or Venezuela collapsing is a great thing. So let's, let's just remind them, uh, ladies, let's search engine mobile execution vans. They have a dozen of them per large city in China around the clock, cutting the organs out when they take you out of the prison. It freaks people out when you, you, know, you do it at the prison. And then they put it on the airplane, they fly to Japan one hour away, and then Americans and others are there to get the, quote, fresh organs. Uh, of Buddhist, 
But if you support peaceful Buddhists having their organs taken, I'm sure you do. Because you know, that's, they've got Mao salons and Mao bar and, 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 and Mao restaurants it's all over the United States. Everybody celebrates. It's so much fun. 84 million under him. What about Stalin? 20 million. It's so much fun to be associated with mass death and execution as you beg for the shield of our liberty and our republic to be pulled down so that you can get a bunch of free stuff as if you'll get anything, morons. All right, we're going to come back and get to the open borders and the situation with our sovereignty on that front and how it ties into a state rep caught tipping off illegals about ICE raids. Well, they admit judges do it here in Travis County. It's like, you know... Old ladies, when the IRS is coming to take their house for back taxes, they don't get a, a warning from the judge because it's, it's, you know. But, but see, it's, it's, it's just all this taking the hospitality of America and then turning it into a sick joke like, I better give you everything in my house, my kids, my wife, everything, to my neighbor, and you're really going to respect me then. Well, most neighbors say, no way, dude, that's your life. But see, the left's been taught, yes, it's mine, it's mine. Get it to me right now. Ah, oh, they're killing babies. I know lots of families. You, I can't even go to Whole Foods now. You go to Whole Foods in Austin, you got kids. People will walk over and laugh at you. They hate you because they're so lonely. They're so unhappy. They're part of a death cult. You know, I was thinking about how Noam Chomsky operates. If you got a hook down in the water and it's got a worm on it, you know, it looks pretty tasty to the bass coming along or the perch. It's the same thing with him. That's why I can't stand these guys. I mean, again, I have the government documents how they hired the black preachers in the 20s to create the whole liberal movement so they could control black people and get them on welfare and destroy their families. And it took them 30, 40 years to get it going, and then look what they've done. I mean, Margaret Sanger's papers are public. There's films. There's books written on it. And it's the same thing with Carol Quigley. I mean, I read stuff he wrote in the early 60s about the creation of people like Noam Chomsky, word for word, not my opinion. And that's why I get so upset. You should read Tragedy and Hope. It's the size of a Dallas phone book back when they had big phone books. <laughs> it's like the size of a 1980s phone book in a big city. Go read it for yourself. And then you'll go, if you actually read the whole book, you'll see it go, oh, my God, this guy. See, the State Department couldn't figure out how to run things. They're like, we're, we're, we're communists, but we're not communists. We're fascists, but we're not. We want dictators. We don't want free countries. Both parties are going to be controlled. We're going to have a controlled left and right. And then so they wrote this book so a thousand people could understand it because they weren't Machiavelli. So, I mean, it's not my opinion about Chomsky. He is a horrible person, but, but I'm done ranting. But it's like a rape van. You know, he looks all nice and candy, puppy. That's how they act all liberal. Oh, my gosh, communism's really good. You're going to like it. Get in the car. They don't normally, you know, say rape van on the side. But if you're actually communist China, they do. They, we're going to rape you of your life and cut your organs out and sell it. Now, before I go any further, I want to get to the border. We've got a bunch of guests coming up today, and I need to tell you about that. Uh, I should plug twice an hour. I don't. We need to find our operation. The toothpaste will sell out today. Uh, the, 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 the child's bubblegum flavor, it's, it's all natural, with iodine and colloidal silver is coming in next week. Now, we have 30% off the BioTrue Selenium by itself or with X2. Both of those are 30% off. And your purchase is absolutely essential. But let me tell you something. Just like our info is hardcore, game-changing, world-changing, we're public enemy number one. We have WikiLeaks documents. We have inside info, you know, from even Media Matters where they hate me. They hate Roger Stone. They call us effective, dangerous, you know, uh, Stone MVP. They're not attacking us because, you know, we're fun to make fun of. They're attacking us because we're radical Americans. They're radical globalists. We're radically challenging them. We don't just... Eat around the edges. As Barry Goldwater said, extremism and defense of liberty is no vice. So I'm telling you, folks, you want to see us really get aggressive. You want to see us have reporters in the field seven days a week, 365 days a year, just investigating the pedophile rings, which I'm pledging to now do. We're going to high gear offense. Infowarslive.com, infowarstore.com. Sign up for auto ships. You can support us. Support yourself and get discounts of additional 10% off. You can cancel any time with one click. 15-day, 30-day, 90-day, right up to six months. I think you can order a year out. we got more of the Victory 2, Lowers In, Limited Edition, Minuteman. We've got uh, a new fire starter system that's so amazing. It's all at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. But 
Folks want a war. They want an info war. They want, they want to win. They're saying I'm under investigation, being a communist or Russian agent. Uh, you know, they got all these demonization campaigns going on everywhere 24-7. They got TV shows and movies admitting that it's characters based on me to say horrible things I never said. It's because we're effective and we're taking action. We have Firestarter Fiber Light. Amazing. Finely ground wood, fiber, and wax. At one spark, you get a fire. It's amazing. Check that out at InfoWarsStore.com. Again, or 888-253-3139. Whatever you do, spread the link, spread the videos. It's an info war, and we're on the march. The globalist corporate fraudster, Coney Capitalist, are on fire. They are burning down. Their control paradigm is exposed. Once they're exposed, it's over. Hour number two. So rock.